Hello friends, today I am reading Class 11, Chapter 4, Landscape of the Soul by Natalie Troveroy. Notice these expressions in the text. Infer their meaning from the context. Anecdote, delicate realism, figurative painting, illusionistic likeness, Conceptual space. A wonderful old tale is told about the painter Wu Daoji, who lived in the 8th century. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the Tang Emperor Zhuangzong to decorate a palace wall. The master had hidden his work behind a screen, so only the emperor would see it. For a while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, birds in flight. Look, sire, said the painter, in this cave at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. The inside is splendid beyond anything words can convey. Please let me show your majesty the way. The painter entered the cave, but the entrance closed behind him, and before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the wall. Not a trace of Wu Daoji's brush was left and the artist was never seen again in this world. Such stories played an important part in China's classical education. The books of Confucius and Zhuangzi are full of them. They help the master to guide his disciple in the right direction. Beyond the anecdote, they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. Contrast the story, or another famous one about a painter who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from my native Flanders that I find most representative of Western painting. In 15th century Antwerp, a master blacksmith called Quintin Metzis fell in love with a painter's daughter. The father would not accept a son-in-law in such a profession. So Quentin sneaked into the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest panel with such delicate realism that the master tried to swat it away before he realized what had happened. Quentin was immediately admitted as an apprentice into his studio. He married his beloved and went on to become one of the most famous painters of his age. These two stories illustrate what each form of art is trying to achieve. A perfect, illusionistic likeness in Europe, the essence of inner life and spirit in Asia. In the Chinese story, the emperor commissions a painting and appreciates its outer appearance but the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work. The emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered, but only the artist knows the way within. Let me show the way, the Tao, a word that means both the path or the method and the mysterious works of the universe. The painting is gone, but the artist has reached his goal, beyond any material appearance. A classical Chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view, as would a Western figurative painting, whereas the European painter wants you to borrow his eyes and look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it from a specific angle. The Chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint. His landscape is not a real one and you can enter in it from any point, 
then travel in it. The artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down, then back again, in a leisurely movement. This is even more true in the case of the horizontal scroll, in which the action of slowly opening one section of the painting, then rolling it up to move on to the other, adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting. It also requires the active participation of the viewer who decides at what pace he will travel through the painting, a participation which is physical as well as mental. The Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes. He wants you to enter his mind. The landscape is an inner one, a spiritual and conceptual space. This concept is expressed as Shan Shui, literally mountain water, which used together represent the word landscape. More than two elements of an image, these represent two complementary poles, reflecting the Taoist view of the universe. The mountain is Yang, reaching vertically towards heaven stable, warm, and dry in the sun, while the water is yin, horizontal, and resting on the earth, fluid, moist, and cool. The interaction of yin, the receptive, feminine aspect of universal energy, and its counterpart, yang, active and masculine, is of course a fundamental notion of Taoism. What is often overlooked is an essential third element, the middle void where their interaction takes place. This can be compared with the yogic practice of pranayama. Breathe in, retain, breathe out. The suspension of breath is the void where meditation occurs. The middle void is essential. Nothing can happen without it. Hence, the importance of the white, unpainted space in Chinese landscape. This is also where man finds a fundamental role. In that space between heaven and earth, he becomes the conduit of communication between both poles of the universe. His presence is essential even if it's only suggested. Far from being lost or oppressed by the lofty peaks, he is, in Francois Cheng's wonderful expression, the eye of the landscape. Excerpt from Landscape of the Soul, Ethics and Spirituality in Chinese Painting, slightly edited. Getting Inside, Outsider Art when French painter Jean Dubuffet mooted the concept of art brute in the 1940s, the art of the untrained visionary was of minority interest. From its almost veiled beginnings, outsider art has gradually become the fastest growing area of interest in contemporary art internationally. This genre is described as the art of those who have no right to be artists as they have received no formal training, yet show talent and artistic insight. Their works are a stimulating contrast to a lot of mainstream offerings. Around the time Du Buffet was propounding his concept in India, an untutored genius was creating paradise. Years ago, the little patch of jungle that he began clearing to make himself a garden, sculpted with stone and recycled material, is known to the world today as the Rock Garden at Chandigarh. Its 80-year-old creator-director, Nick Chan, is now hailed as India's biggest contributor to outside art. The 50th issue, Spring 2005, of Raw Vision, a UK-based magazine, 
pioneer in outsider art publications, features Nakechan and his rock garden sculpture, Women by the Waterfall, on its anniversary issues cover. The notion of art brute or raw art was of works that were in their raw state as regards cultural and artistic influences. Anything and everything, from a tin to a sink to a broken down car, could be material for a work of art, something Nate Chen has taken to dizzying heights. Recognizing his art, as an astounding testimony of the difference a single man can make when he lives his dream. The Swiss Commission for UNESCO will be honoring him by way of a European exposition of his works. The five-month interactive show, Realm of Nation, beginning October, will be held at leading museums in Switzerland, Belgium, France and Italy. The biggest reward is walking through the garden and seeing people enjoy my creation, Nekchan says. Brinda Suri, Hindustan Times, 28 August 2005 So friends, if you know someone who will benefit from these videos, kindly share it with them. Like the video and also subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any more videos from this channel. And thanks for listening.